Here's another example of a derivative in action in a way that's not just like position versus time and velocity. It's the mass and density of a rod. Um, this is uh, in the book, but I wanted to give my presentation of it. We've got a, uh, a rod here, so like a cylindrical rod maybe. This doesn't matter if it's cylindrical, but some sort of long skinny rod. And it's made of, it has some material that's going to vary in density. Maybe it's going to be heavy in one part, lighter in another part. And we're going to measure it from the one end, which is x equals 0. And we're just going to measure, let's say, centimeter by centimeter along the rod. And we're going to keep track of the mass. Um, so before I say in detail exactly how that happens, let me say a, like an example where this might happen. You might think this is a really contrived, weird example, like some rod whose density varies. Um, but a, a real world example of this would be like an ice core. Um, they go to Antarctica or Greenland and they, they bury, uh, they, uh, they drill down uh, very deep into the ice and they take out a very long skinny cylinder exactly like this shape and then they analyze it and the deeper the ice is the older it is and you get a record of things of like climate change for example or various other historical um, records of the chemistry and geology of uh, that place or of maybe of the whole earth um, and so this this is one example you might want to you might find that sometimes the ice is, has like maybe less air in it so it's more dense or more air so it's less dense so this actually is a very realistic example in that kind of case so here's one way you could keep track of that in, as a function we want to bring functions into this as that's the bread and butter of calculus and one way which is probably not the way that it would, would occur to you is we set up the running total mass function and that's going to be m of x and that's just the total mass, well, let's do that without math mode, total mass from uh, this, the left end, which x equals 0, to position x. And so this is something you might actually do. As you're sort of analyzing the ice core, you just look at each section of it, you, and you keep a, keep, uh, keep a running total. How much was total from here to here? How much total from here to here? How much total from here to here? It's more natural, maybe, to most people to keep a track of just what's the mass of this section, what's the mass of this section, what's the mass of this section. And that's actually where the calculus is going to come in. Okay, So, for example, uh, m of 2 is going to be the total mass in the 0 to 2 section. Let's, let's use that, for example. And then m of, let's say, 2.1, that's going to be the total mass in... All still from zero. It's always these are always starting from zero. That's the way we decided to measure it to 2.1. So what if you did want to focus on just the mass from two to 2.1? You say that's the the period of history I want. I know I know how old this is. I want to know the density. I want to know how much uh, how thick the ice was or how dense the ice was. Well, that's going to be a difference. Okay, and that's going to be m of 2.1 minus m of 2. Okay, so that's that mass just that section. And so what I'm suggesting is this, add the, these are the x values, the, the lengths, that's a delta x. Now, was it, did I have to pick 0.1? That was like 0.1 centimeters? That's not that significant. If I just want to concentrate on what was happening in this region, I could have picked 2.01 for a small slice, or 2.2, or something like that. So what I really want is not how much mass is in here, but how much mass is in here divided by that 0.1 I took. So this is a kind of a density, but it's a little bit weird. It's a linear density. 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 And the units are, um, let's say, grams per centimeter, not per cubic centimeter. Because the cross-sectional area is, is fixed. That's constant. I just need to know how many centimeters of the rod that I take and how many grams there is, in, is in that. So it's a little bit slightly different from what you're used to with it, like grams per cubic centimeter. So what did I just? What did we just do? What we did was we took m of two plus delta x, and it happened to be 0.1, but that wasn't really significant. Minus m of two divided by delta x. That's approximately the derivative. That's approximately m prime of two. And if I really wanted to focus very very closely on just what's happening at two, I would actually take delta x smaller and smaller and smaller, and I would take this expression. And I would take the limit, 
as delta x goes to zero of that expression. And that's not approximately the derivative, that is the derivative. Okay. And so that's going to focus in and say how heavy, how dense or not dense, how, um, what's the structure of this ice or whatever the material is right at the point 2. Okay. And so um, remember that's also, we can ide idealize that as dm over dx. Okay. So that's really interesting. Now, again, this is a little weird. I want to make a note. It's going to connect with some later stuff. It's a little weird going from the running total, which wasn't that interesting to us, perhaps, to the key information, to the density information. I cannot spell that right. Okay. Um, this might well be how it would work in practice, but it's a little odd because the running total is not what people first jump at. Usually, people actually first say, oh, I know we're interested in this. I know we're interested in where it's heavy, where it's light. They just don't realize that that's the derivative of something else. Okay. Well, so the process of going from the running total to the density, we've seen that that's uh, the process of taking a derivative. Okay. What if I knew the density? Or what if, like, I had, what if I wanted to make a rod with a given variation in density? Suppose I wanted to, maybe I was in a, working in a museum and I wanted to make a sample ice core, maybe not something out of ice so people could handle it, maybe out of some sort of plastic to simulate it, that was really heavy in one section and really light in one section and then really heavy again. So suppose I knew the variations in density and I wanted to make a rod. Well, maybe I could just start here and add layer by layer by layer by layer. In other words, I would be creating the function m, the, the mass so far function. Okay. And what's the process here? If going from the running total to the density is a derivative, going from the density to the, the running total function must be an antiderivative. That's very interesting. That is going to be a link to the second half and the second big topic in our course. For right now, we're satisfied, hopefully, with just the idea of if we have the total mass or if you give me the dmdx, we can manipulate it in the same way we're learning to manipulate other derivatives. But I thought it was too good to pass up this opportunity to at least give you a little tease about the fact that antiderivatives are going to be equally important in this course.